and relax. Take a good breath and give it away. Okay, so today I wanted to not talk about mindfulness or meditation or plastic or whatever subject I normally obsess about. Maybe this is a form of mindfulness, but I wanted to talk about the notion of being a moderate in the United States of America, let alone this world. So one of the uh, human beings who has been most inspiring to me and to many of us in the United States over the last year, uh, I think it's been that short of a time, is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she was so inspiring. I have spent a Saturday morning, you know, listening to hours of her talks and her speeches. I went to her website and donated uh, during her campaign or, or just right around her campaign. And, you know, I have her posters. I got her t-shirt. I view her as a future presidential candidate and just as a kick-ass inspiring human being. Um, but the other day at South by Southwest, she said quite condescendingly, kind of tittering to herself, um, something that many of us say, so I'm not even picking on her. Uh, especially in Trump America, it has been become uncool to be a moderate. Moderate has become synonymous with beige. You know, the sort of beige that Microsoft computers were in the 90s. A kind of beige that is just boring and off-putting and stupid. And you wonder why anyone would want to be beige in this rainbow world. And I'm sympathetic to uh, that, if you put it that way. And the way she put it at South by Southwest, she said, being a moderate is kind of like being, like shrugging your shoulders and being like, eh. And that's kind of what she did. And people laughed. And sure, I think that's fair. If you're a moderate about equal rights, you need to, you know, check yourself and get inspired and get active and get crazy. Some people have tried to solve this sort of moderate puzzle by calling themselves an extreme moderate or a crazy moderate or something. I don't remember. Various politicians have tried to kind of wangle this divide. And that's what I'm going to try to do today because I consider myself a moderate. I also consider myself a progressive. I also consider myself a liberal. Um, in some ways, probably two different ways, I consider myself a conservative. But most of all, I consider myself a citizen, uh, a free human being, uh, and a proud member of this uh, incredibly flawed uh, democracy that has great potential to continue to improve. Um, and obviously, sometimes we backslide a bit. So hopefully, as MLK talked about, Martin Luther King Jr., and then as Barack Obama talked about, we can bend the arc of history toward justice. So even if there's uh, some backsliding and, you know, not to be overly partisan and not to shock anybody here, but I'm not a huge fan of President Trump. Uh, but I'm not a fan of him because he's conservative. I'm not a fan of him, particularly because he seems to encourage division. He encourages hatred. He encourages an us versus themism. He encourages politics and dignity and people, you know, public service to become this kind of divisive football team, yell at the other side kind of thing. And I think that's why I want to plant a little flag gently in the soil of America and say that's why being a moderate is not only okay, but more important than ever. To me, what being a moderate means is that you're willing to work with the other side. You're willing to work with your own uh, extreme progressives. You're willing to work with anybody. You're willing to listen. And for those of you out there who don't want to encourage a white man to listen these days, I don't think there's too many of you. So listening and being a moderate, being willing to work together, being willing to reply in a non-aggressive manner to people who disagree with you, if it's an honest disagreement, not an honest, not a disagreement founded on fake news or on um, just kind of uh, sort of Fox News uh, point uh, taking. That didn't really make any sense. But like 
a grandpa of a friend of mine who lives in the South, he was like, oh, look at this Fox News thing on climate change, see how it doesn't even exist. She didn't even want to argue with him because, frankly, if you take a good open look, if you're open-minded and you look at climate change, there's no question that it exists, that it's mad man-made, largely men-made, and that it's going to be dangerous to all of us, women, men, children, animals, our planet, our economy, our military. It's going to affect all of us, and it already is. So I think that's the key thing with being a moderate is an open mind. So yes, I consider myself an extreme moderate, a, a progressive on issues of equality, on issues of inequality, on issues of health care, on issues of... But even on health care, you could be a moderate in the sense that single payer used to be a conservative point of view. So without getting too detailed, I think it's the duty of all of us not to be right and not to hate on others, but to listen and to try to find a bigger right, a capital R right, that is something we all can work together on and... No matter how right we are, little are right, we are in a country with millions of other people who feel different on many different issues. And that needs to be okay. That diversity of thought needs to be okay. As long as we don't have a diversity of facts, we can't be in a world with alternative facts and fake news where those hold equal credence to uh, journalism and to science and to actual facts. We see the damage that happens say, in vac uh, vaccinations and the anti-vax movement. And of course, sure, to be a moderate about that, there could be re reasonable common sense concerns about vaccinations. And I certainly applaud any parent who is, um, you know, researching and taking the health of their child seriously. But at the same time, we're having outbreaks of measles that we haven't seen for 100 years. There are certain... Uh, truths that I think we all need to basically be able to acknowledge, and then we can disagree about them, but we need to have a unified um, uh, system of deciding whether something is even true enough to debate about. And I think, again, that's the virtue of being moderate, is you can say, okay, here's a fact. You can feel differently on this side. You can feel differently on this side. I come in on this side. So I think you get it. Basically, it's important not to get so ideological, whether you're liberal or progressive or conservative or Tea Party far right, libertarian, whatever point of view you're coming from, um, that you can't even listen or work with others. Bernie Sanders is someone I respect greatly. He is, by any measure, a rather extreme progressive, uh, especially in view of four years ago when he was talking about stuff nobody else was acknowledging in the mainstream of political thought as being possible. And yet he was willing and ready to endorse Hillary. He was willing and ready to work with John McCain on various issues. We all need to basically remember that in a democracy, it's important to be respectful with those you disagree. And again, that includes anyone who is acknowledging basic facts. If someone is full-on virulent racist or aggressive, there's no need to really engage with them in any way. Uh, you could block them, you could report them, etc. There's no need to be moderate about immoderate people, but 95% of us are on planet Earth and we're human beings, and we need to remember to listen and be kind. And, you know, my dad is a Republican, so whenever I argue with him, almost every time he out-argues me, and I have to go back and research my prior position and his position and then I come back to him with some new findings and facts and then eventually we kind of come to a common understanding. He's learned a little, I've learned a little and it doesn't just all come out in the wash as beige, it comes out in the wash as truth free of ideology. So while I think it's important to be passionate about your politics and to vote I think it's also important to reclaim that word moderate from those like Alexandria in this case, who would denigrate it and say it is the same thing as not caring. Thank you very much. We could end with a little bow, take a good posture, and whether you agree or disagree, with respect, give it away.
10 minutes.